Good morning. Nice day again today. Before we get started with the work, I'll give you an up-to-date uh, appraisal of what the situation is because we've left it for about a week now. So far, we've managed to get the first four tanks in and they're all standing on the bases. One, two, three, four. Bottom drains are all in. We've all got water in. Here's a quick tip for you if you've got a hole in a tank like this that you no longer want. All you need to do is get yourself a couple of circles of a similar material, cut them out using a hole saw, and then put a disc on the front and a disc on the back. Clamp it all together with a nut, washer, and a bolt, and a bit of that um, sealant. Nice, neat finish. Fish won't rub themselves on that, and it'll be 100% waterproof. Hang on. The boss is here now, we best get on with some work. <laughs> oh God. Well, this is a bit of a mess around here, Lee. What's going on? Well, we're putting some tanks in, Wendy. I told you what we were doing. I've been telling you. I know, but you seem to have been on it weeks. How long is it going to take? Weeks, we've only had about three or four days on it. What are you on about? Oh God. Oh, seems like it's going on forever. Well, we're, we're making a lot of progress, actually. I mean, look how much work we've done. All this lot, four tanks. You need all these tanks. Well, we're going to have a lot more fish this year, aren't we? Some nice fish for people to look at. So we need some tanks so we can move the fish around, do some better offers. And when we're doing the online thing, where are we going to store the fish that we've sold? We, we need some tanks. OK, as long as you know what you're doing. Oh, we know what we're all doing, right, all I'm right. Off now. All right, we'll see you again. Come, come back in about three weeks, we'll be done. <laughs> Really cold night last night. Piece of pipe frozen in there. Okay. Obviously we partially backfilled the first two tanks last week. And today we're gonna to be carrying on connecting up these two tanks or rather connecting up the four tanks all together in one long line. Nice short saw, that Matthew. Safety short saw, so I don't hurt my fingers. It chewed for it faster. That one they have in the nursery. <laughs> all right, let's try it in the hole. Let's see I'll how it goes. That blue saw. Yeah. yeah. When you buy these tubs of solvent weld, they come with a pathetic little brush. I'll show you that. Right down. This little farty thing. You're not going to get very far with that. What I recommend is that you get yourself a cheap old brush and you just use that. That way you can get right into the bottom of the tin, get all the glue out, and you can slap plenty on the fittings. Like that, look. This brush is actually set because it's been in the shed overnight. But it'll do the job a lot better than that farty little thing that comes in the uh, solvent weld. There we go. Every bit out the bottom. Yeah, I've got plenty, thanks. Ooh. So all we've done, cut the lens of pipe, glued them up with plenty of solvent weld, pushed them all together, and Matthew's just gonna hold it for a minute or two to make sure that it's gonna set properly.
Just chuck that one straight in there for me. Thank you. This is going in quite nicely. This will protect the pipe, make sure it doesn't get damaged. Break that out. I'm going to ram some ballast underneath the tank to support the bottom drain and stop the pipe from moving about. The ballast is ideal for this because it will consolidate instantly. We need to come up with a solution to uh, protecting these valves. Have you got any ideas, Matthew? Yeah, I've been thinking about it. We've got some of them hollow blocks left. I think if we cut them, we'll be able to make like a horseshoe shape to protect the valve and allow us to get our hands in and block off the outside of it. Yeah, that, that's a really good idea. Put one up, give it a go. See if yeah. it fits on this one, if it does. It's I don't see work. why it won't work, that. Give it a go. It's all right, it's good enough for what we're doing, Matthew, on this job. Have you seen that up there? Look at that. That's what we need, but we need it to look like a koi. That's really good, isn't it? It's more to those um, protection chambers in. They won't go anywhere. And we put the mortar all the way up to the tanks so that the infill won't slip under the tank. We've got to get this down, get it reasonably level, and then try and consolidate it. We've started uh, installing the bottom drains for the filter system now. They've also got to be set into the base. So big discharge on the bottom of the tank. That's a three inch outlet. We don't want it to take a long time to drain these tanks down. It should empty in about a minute or so with the three inch pipe like that. This one's also got a three inch pipe in the bottom, straight into a valve. Now these have had to be supported on a breeze block because they wouldn't quite be at the right height that we need them to be if we didn't do that. Over here, we've built a one block high retaining wall. That's gonna hold back our path, whether we concrete it or just gravel it. We're not entirely sure yet. We're gonna decide on that next week. All the tanks are in. And we've even packed material behind the tank so there's never any danger of the tank sliding backwards. All looking good. We've got four of these 2,500 litre tanks. We're going to fit bottom drains into them, we're going to fit overflow skimmers into them and we're going to run them into a DIY multi-stage gravity fed filter but you're gonna have to wait until next week to see that because i've got to get home and start editing this video thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video if you like what you see please make sure that you subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up post a question or just say hi in the comments it's bye for now from lee at the japanese water garden